We're all eagerly awaiting the launch of the GPT store by OpenAI. That's supposed to happen this week. Some are even claiming it's going to happen today. This, which you see on screen, is a leaked image of what that store is going to look like. But please understand, I have no clue if it's real or not. You know, they have this trending section at the bottom with Grimoire by Nick Dobos here at the bottom, which he, by the way, commented on. We'll take a look at that in just a second. These are real GPTs, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is a real screenshot. So somebody, this Danis Tkakovs, right? He's number one with his new GPT-5. The thing is, if I open up a incognito window and I search for GPT-5 in Google, this is his GPT-5, you know, GPT. So I think this is just somebody that really figured out how to get ranked in the Google search results and he's at the top. This is real. I checked some of the other ones. They, th this seems legit, but we have no idea until it's actually launched. One of the interesting things here is that they show these categories, which I didn't think about. Obviously there will be categories. How else? That's just a simple way to organize them, help people find the right ones, sort of have rankings in different ones. So they have, you know, by default, top picks. Then you have Dali, writing, research and analysis, programming, education, productivity, and lifestyle. So in this video, let's quickly talk about what can we expect the store to look like, how you can get prepared. And at the very end, I'll put in my tutorial how to set up your profile in the right way. We'll put that towards the end because some of you have already seen that. But if you're not set up yet, that's a quick one minute tutorial on how to get set up correctly. There's a few tricky things in there when you're setting up your profile that you need to be aware of. Otherwise, you might have issues down the road. And I do want to spend a little bit of time talking about will you be able to make money from GPTs? Now, there's a lot of people that have a lot of different opinions. People even in the comments for some of the videos that I've done about this say, well, it's too easy to replicate GPTs. You know, if, if you create a good GPT that's making money, somebody else is going to rip it off. And we'll have to see how they structure everything. And of course, people will be able to take some of your ideas, maybe create their own versions of that ideas. That's always the case. But I'll show you a few reasons why I think that there will be protections for your GPT. So if you create something that's really good, that's really helpful, that has users that are interested, that are using it, number one, you will be able to make money with it. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Number two, it will not be that easy to just come in and copy it. I mean, somebody might recreate your product, but that doesn't mean that they're going to start getting all your users and all the new users that are searching for that. But really fast, I want to point something out here. A few of these trending GPTs are GPTs that are for talking to your PDF, which has been an extremely popular subject, extremely popular use for chat GPT as a whole. Now, whether or not this is true, the fact that you're going to see GPTs dealing with PDFs, that part is true. I can guarantee it that when, when we launch within the top 10, there will be at least one GPT that chats with your PDFs. Now, in one of my previous videos, we took a look at this PDF AI by Damon Chen. So as you can see here, this is the monthly searches for PDF AI. So for a while, it wasn't really a thing. And then you can kind of see this inflection point in 2023 somewhere where it's like, it's, it's now a thing. It's up 244% year over year. There's over a quarter million searches in the past month. Here, I'm actually going to run this up-to-date search right now. So this is PDF AI worldwide for the past five years. So as you can see here, somewhere in January 2023, it takes off and just goes into the stratosphere. And so Damon Chan created PDF AI where users can upload a PDF and ask it questions. What does this mean? Explain the legal jargon. What is my termination clause, etc. This is extremely useful for any legal documents, for if you're signing a lease, for research, for school, for just anything you can think of. This allows you to extract information from PDF documents. And so Damon is making 500,000 a year with over 500,000 customers. And we've talked about all the other ones. So Formula Bot, where you ask ChatGPT for Excel formula help, right? That person is making two to 300,000 a year. One person team, the PDF AI guy is making 500,000 a year with a one person team. Photo AI, 900,000 a year with a one person team. And they're doing a lot of this with no code, meaning that they're not, they're not coders. They're not software developers. They're using things like Bubble to create websites with API connection, stuff like that. So Bubble is the world's only full stack, no code platform. 
Now, I'm not affiliated with them. They're not paying me money to say this, although I should probably get an affiliate link to put in the description since they, they do legitimately have a very good product that a lot of people use to build something like this. So this is PDF AI, so you can get started for free. And he's also got a kind of a free demo that you can run with the Satoshi Nakamoto Bitcoin paper. What else? It comes preloaded in case you wanted to ask questions about it. So you, for example, can say, explain proof of work without jargon. And it's going to go through and try to explain that. So it explains it and it gives you, you know, page three and page eight as it's this page three where it first talks about it, page eight. So it's pulling from the document to explain it. Now, why is that important? Take a look at this. So this is ask your PDF research assistant. When you Google PDF AI, PDF AI, that's the one that we looked at. That was the number one. That's Damon's product making 500,000 a year, probably at this point, more like 700,000 a year if, you know, the income scaling of his users. And this is ask your PDF. That's that trending or, you know, if the screenshot is real, a trending PDF app. So it's number, was that number two on the Google organic results, right? Because all of this is sponsored. So really this is number one, this is number two. So this takes you to that website. It has the pricing very similar to PDF AI, 20 bucks a month for the pro version. That gives you things like chatting with multiple documents at once. So here's their GPT. So this is the thing that's going to appear on the GPT store. So when somebody goes to the OpenAI's GPT store and they type in PDF AI, this is one of the things that are going to appear. And notice this, askyourpdf.com, that's this page. And this is their app or their GPT that's listed on the OpenAI store. So for example, you can say, how can I use this GPT? And so it tells you what it does. So it, ha it has an AI essay writer, it has an AI references and citation tool, and it has the sort of chat with GPT where it can help you extract information from your PDF documents. And now you can have documents on your account, but to have documents on your account, so meaning your own kind of private documents that are saved that you can chat with back and forth, well, guess what? You got to sign in with pro.askyourpdf.com. That's this, you have to have a, an account with them. So in case you're new to stuff like this, what this means is that there will be people that make a lot of money with this. And it won't even be because they're making money from OpenAI paying them for GPTs. It will be because they will connect their services to a GPT. So users will find the GPT in the store. It will probably have a number of things that you can do for free. And most people will use it for free and be happy with that and share it. And because they're using it and reviewing it, right, it's going to slowly sort of float up in the, in the GPT store. More and more people will use it. But then some percentage of them will want to have the pro features, whatever those may be. So for example, in this case, I mean, it's basically more more pages per document, more questions, 50 documents per day using different models, including GPT-4 and Claude using multiple documents at once. So for example, if you have a knowledge base with five different PDFs and you want to be able to query like all of them, wherever that information is. And so those people will create an account now with you directly. It will be linked to their GPT in here, right? They might be paying you 10, 20, 30 bucks a month or whatever it is for your services or some one-time fee or whatever it is. And that's going to give them the full functionality of chat gpt alongside with whatever functionality that they provide whether that's storage or some additional services or whatever and they will be able to access that through this gpt profile all in here here's another example by ben from ben's bytes so chat base lets you set up your own chat gpt using your data makes 1 million annual recurring revenue with a solo co-founder the market is there so this is chat base so it looks like you have a free version all the way up to an unlimited version for 400 a month. So my point here is that right now it does seem like the opportunity is massive. You're able to make money from OpenAI, them paying for people using your GPT. You can hook it up to your own payment system off site on your own site. I think the key is going to be thinking in terms of like a front end slash back end product. So front end is something that everybody can use and enjoy and get benefit from potentially for free, right? That's kind of like what most people will be using, but some percentage of those will be the pro users that will sign up for some sort of a recurrently recurring monthly service that they're interested in, I guess, with apps and software that's referred to as freemium, right? So it's free, but you have your premium part of it. And it seems like the opportunity to create new solutions like this is wide open. There has been not enough time for people to fully understand everything that's available to build with ChatGPT. There might be apps on there that we haven't even 
thought of as use cases, but will that will go on to make millions. When the App Store launched, the Fart app was one of the top 10 apps on there making millions. It was an app that you pushed a button and it would make a rude noise. That's pretty much all it did. That game Flappy Bird, it was making like 50,000 a day, I think, at, at, at the peak. So at the end of this video, I'll play a quick how to get started that will show you how to set up your account. But I do want to hear from you. What are you going to be building? Because you will try something at least, right? It's free to get started. You'll at least try to build something. Don't don't sit this one out. This one's kind of important. Do something. What ideas do you have? Or at least what category are you thinking of doing? Do you want to do something in writing or productivity or, or gaming? That wasn't one of the categories that I saw in there. But I mean, gaming could be a fun one. You can have some sort of a back and forth AI assisted games. I think that learning and education apps will be huge. Let me know what you're going to be building. Let me know what GPTs are you excited to see. Let me know what I can do to help. What content, what training, what information do you need to keep going? Right now we're waiting for the launch because that's kind of like the go signal. Plus that's when we'll know more about how everything works. But for the time being, what are you excited to see? My name is Wes Roth and thank you for watching. All right, so really fast, I'm going to make a brand new OpenAI account and we're going to go ahead and get in there and create our builder profile and start building. All right, so step one, try ChatGPT, sign up. So you put your email address in there, continue. For password, I'll put ABC123. No, I'm just kidding. All right, we have a password. Verify our email. OpenAI verify email address. Tell us about you. Well, my name is Natural20. You know what, I'm gonna go with West Raw, and then we're gonna have to enter the code they sent us to verify our phone number. All right, let's go. So I think here we're gonna have to upgrade in order to, to have access to all the features. So I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade to plus Carmel Mountain Road, San Diego. Let's go, success. So I've just traveled about 10 minutes in the future to show you this. This is what your builder profile will look like. Notice what it says there, name is populated from your billing details, and I'm not able to change it. So it sounds like whatever you put in the billing details under name is what's going to show up here. All right, next we're going to head over to my GPTs. We will click on create a GPT. All right, so I'll click create one called home base. And in the description it tells you about all the products that Wes Roth has in store. And for instructions, we're going to consult the attached documentation about existing products. GPTs by Wes Roth, list them and answer questions about them. And so for conversation stars, we're going to do something like list all available GPTs by Wes Roth. All right, we're going to keep that as is for now, and we'll come back in just a second. And let's go ahead and save it. So we're going to click confirm. Let's go back to edit GPT. And now this GPT may appear in the GPT store coming soon. So we'll click public. And we're going to click this little button right there to create our builder profile. All right. And here we have, let's select a domain. We're going to verify a new domain. We're going to add a new domain. So I have my natural 20 domain. Let's go ahead and just use that. Submit. So give me an error message. So it looks like they just want the, uh, just a domain name.com. All right. To verify ownership of your natural 20.com, navigate to your DNS provider and add a TXT record. So basically, whoever's your, wherever you bought your domain or your hosting provider, you need to add this as a record under the DNS. It's usually pretty straightforward. So we're going to copy this. So for me, that's Cloudflare, Natural20. I'll click on the DNS settings. Just find DNS settings with whomever you're hosting or whoever your registrar is. As you can see here, these are the various records. These are the various TXT records that are here. So we're going to add one. What kind of type? What type is it? It's TXT. The content is whatever they gave you. Name, natplot20.com. You can look at to see what the other ones are, but, and we'll click save. So there it is. A, it's a TXT record, natural20, open AI domain verification. And so this can take a while, but every once in a while, it's pretty fast. All right. Yeah. That's been successfully verified and we're done. So once we've verified the domain, we click on. So it's not showing up. Let me click refresh here and see. There it is. Okay, so if it doesn't show up, I click refresh. And now we have natural20 as our verified domain. We'll go ahead and click here to enable it. All right, and now this one's going to be public. So let's click public, confirm. And there's our beautiful GPT publicly available to all. 
with a link to our website.